If you've been watching the channel for very long, you know that we talk a lot about everyday carry gear and EDC stuff, basically the stuff that you have on your person at any given moment that's what you're going to have to respond to any sort of emergency or whatever. So um, it's, it's, I think it's an important topic. Well, last year I had the privilege of spending a week with Clint and Heidi Smith at Thunder Ranch in Oregon. And while I was there, I had the opportunity to interview Clint. So I did about an hour long video, which is posted on the channel and I highly encourage you to watch it. But one of the things we talked about in that interview was what Clint considers the minimum everyday carry gear that a prepared person should have on them. So like I said, that's about an hour long video. What I've done for today's video is I've pulled out the everyday carrier EDC stuff so you can hear what Clint's got to say just about that in a, in a more concise form. And that's what's coming up next here on Survival on Purpose. Welcome back to Survival on Purpose, your home for trustworthy information and gear reviews related to camping, survival, and general preparedness for regular folks. My name's Brian. Thanks for joining me. And like I said, this today's video is an excerpt from an hour-long interview I did with Clint Smith uh, on his, his front porch, basically, at Thunder Ranch. And I'll put a link to that right up here. I'd encourage you to watch that. But if you don't have an hour and you want to hear what Clint's got to say about what he thinks is the minimum gear you should carry on your person to be prepared, then this video is for you. And real quickly, if you're, if you're not familiar with who Clint Smith is and why what he's got to say on the topic might be of importance, um, his background is he's a Marine Corps veteran. He was a combat veteran from Vietnam, wounded in Vietnam, came home. He was, he was law, in law enforcement for about 10 years, and he's been teaching um, firearms and, and fighting with firearms and self-defense with firearms and tactical type stuff, mostly to civilians for about 50 years. So um, the man knows what he's talking about. So without me rambling any further, let's cut right to the interview. This is Clint Smith and his thoughts on everyday carry gear. What do you think is the minimum of a... Um the, the minimum you should carry on your person to be prepared. You need to listen to this. Okay, so if you ask me, I would say a gun, okay, um, that you can shoot reasonably, repeatedly. I didn't say fast. I said reasonably. In other words, 9 millimeter versus 44 full house magnums, okay, right. as an example. So I'd rather have you beside me with a nine hitting everything you were shooting at than this guy next to me with a 44 mag missing everything but ruining our hearing. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So I would carry a gun. I personally would always carry spare ammunition. I would personally like to have at least two, and I usually carry three. And it, I don't carry them for the reason other people do. I don't carry them because I can shoot more. Can I shoot more? Yes. I carry them in case there's a mechanical failure. A base plate comes off. Uh, I caught it on a door frame. Uh, you know... There's everything that can go wrong in a fight will. So I would carry the gun. I would carry spare ammo. And the biggest component here is it's awesome to have a good gun. It's awesome to have spare ammo. But if you have it in a shitty platform, like a crappy belt and a crappy holster and a crappy mag pouch, then you might as well take the gun and chuck it out the window. So it's got to be a good platform. And I think that is a platform. A gun, okay, spare ammo, a good holster appropriate to the gun that fits the gun, and you might consider a bug, a backup gun, like an ankle gun, because a lot of people spend a lot of time in cars, and it's very hard to get a gun out of a belt holster, which is where most people should carry it, okay? So maybe we'll just say for personal discussion an ankle gun, okay? Um, especially at my age, I'm older, chances are if there's a fight, I'm gonna be on the ground, and anybody watching this, if you've ever been in a fight, from childhood, playground forward, if you've ever been in a fight, generally most people who've been in a fight been on the ground. So if I'm on the ground, I need to be able to get access to the gun. So we got now a gun, we got spare ammo, we got a solid platform. I would always have something with an edge on it. And it isn't, I don't need a crocodile dundee knife, I just need something. And then based on, again, not crossing the legal limitations, here in Oregon we can have basically what are called auto knives, which in my day as a cop we called switch blades. Right. Okay, you can push a button, it opens. That's cool because that way with either hand you can open it even if you were injured. So a knife. I would always carry a light. You will never realize how much you use a flashlight, which will be a lot more than a gun, until yep. you actually start carrying one. And then it, everything from finding a cat toy underneath or drop my keys under the seat, you know, the, so the light. Um, and those are two relatively consistent things that people who have been in really bad spots mention. Something to cut something with. And I don't, like I said, I don't need a machete, okay? I mean, you know, okay, we're watching this. All of you think about where you'd like to be cut one inch deep on your body. <laughs> where, would you, where would you be happy with that? Okay? Yeah. So it's, yeah, you get it. So um, gun, ammo, proper support system, 
knife, okay, a light. And personally, I don't leave home without first aid gear anymore. And I got to tell you that 10 years ago, I didn't carry first aid gear, not like we think of it. Today, I carry a quick clot, okay? I carry a hyphen chest seal because I am a gun guy, and chances are of being in a gun or some good shot or shooting someone, rendering aid to a friend, okay? A gunshot wound to the chest is pretty awful. And so that ability to, I mean, like in Vietnam, we used saran wrap off the cigarette packs instead of hyphen seals, okay? Because nobody thought about it. And then if you're ever doing a gunshot wound, always check for the exit. So tourniquet, absolutely. Every one of you should have a tourniquet and you get it. You don't want to go that way. You'll be, you'll be stunned, okay? Um, we don't know, people. Um, two weeks ago, year, I have an 18-year-old kid. This is an example. I don't need to get into stories, but this will give you a beautiful example of how life is. Great kid, solid kid. We had him in a hunting rifle class, okay? He was cool, you know. Uh, great kid, uh, great family. Everything's cool. Last thing I did before he walked out the door, because he's a family friend to me, um, I give him a hug and I go, you know, be careful, put your seatbelt on. He wasn't 25 miles from Lakeview and got hit head on, okay? And most people in that scenario would have died, okay? And the kids, he's, he's gonna make it, he's doing good. You know what I mean? He's busted up, but mm -hmm. yeah, you know what I'm saying? So the idea is I don't know. And personally, when I saw the leg injury that he had, okay, because something came literally through the floorboard and stabbed him, I would have been really on my toes about putting a tourniquet on that, okay? You know what I mean? So then I got to think, okay, could I self-apply the tourniquet? So going back at it, gun, ammo, support platform, knife, light, first aid gear, and all that stuff should be relatively close or compact to me in my mind's eye. And at minimum, I would have that scenario in some sort of a go bag in the back of the trunk of my car, and that may be with or without the gun, based on what laws are where you live, I would never advocate that people break the law, okay, you know, we've already talked about that, but you know. I think that idea of, you know, um, having some sort of prepared bag, like we have what we call winter bags here in Oregon. So literally we can go, like I can leave here, you and I can leave here, I can drive 200 miles, okay, to the southeast, to Winnemucca, Nevada, that's 200 miles. I'm telling you, there's nothing out there but wild donkeys and wild horses. Well, we came through there. We right. came through there. Right. It is, it is yeah, flat I mean, and bare. And so the deal with it is I go, okay, great. It's February. I went off the road. Okay. Uh, bad snow. I shouldn't be out here to start with. Okay. I got improper tires. You know, I'm the village idiot. I still need to be able to open my trunk. I need to have a couple days where I can eat. Something I can set on fire. Okay. The point of it is a lot of us get stuck in bad spots that don't require us to shoot our way out like we're at the OK Corral. OK, well, that is what the legendary Clint Smith says about everyday carry gear. And um, first of all, I agree with it. Second of all, I think it makes a lot of sense. And third of all, just watching this little excerpt, maybe you want to go back and rewatch the entire interview, which I've already done a couple of times because I keep picking up something new every time. And I was there when I did it. So if you haven't done that, um, just I'm telling you, it's an hour long, but it is an hour of solid gold wisdom from a legendary, a legendary figure in the uh, firearms and tactical and self-defense community. So there's a link up here again. There'll be a link in the video description below. And if you haven't trained with Thunder Ranch, do it. Just do it. Bite the bullet. Do it. It's well, well worth it. The, the level of of wisdom and instruction you get is is, is going to be well worth it. And if you can't go train, go. I'll put a link in the video description below as well because they've got some. They've got a lot of resources that you can you can access without going there that are really worth it. You know, they're little. They have a little um, USB stick thing that is. And it's got all Clint's lectures and and, and just it, it is. I promise, I bought one a couple years ago. It's even bigger now, and it's well, well worth it. So check that out. There'll be a link to that in the video description below as well. And I hope this video has been helpful. I really appreciate you watching Survival on Purpose. Remember, my name's Brian. Survival's not an accident, so be prepared. I'll see you next time.